Hello and welcome back to the e-learning series on BSF BioWaste Processing. This module from the chapter of BSFL Post-Processing will focus on sand roasting BSF larvae. After watching this module, you will be able to describe the product quality of sand roasted BSF larvae. You will understand the mass balance of sand roasting BSF larvae and you can apply the step-by-step -step process of sand roasting BSF larvae. You will recognize the process control parameters and you will apply procedures for data collection. Finally, you will be able to identify pros and cons of sand roasting BSF larvae. Sand roasting is a traditional cooking technique, which some of you may know from making the typical Indonesian snack, krupuk. We use sand because it prevents the larvae from getting burned and it ensures even heating. Sand is a good heat medium. Sand roasting is a fast drying method which makes the water inside the larvae evaporate very quickly. This leads to crispy and puffed BSF larvae. We also call them pop larvae. As you can see in the picture, the roasted pop larvae are crispy and puffed. The color ranges from bright yellow to dark brown. The brown color comes from the roasting process, which is less gentle compared to microwave drying and therefore leads to more color changes. Dried larvae have a similar nutritional quality compared to also microwave dried larvae. They mainly consist of protein and fat. Each can account for around 30 to 40%. In smaller amounts, they also contain fibers, ash, and carbohydrates. Dried larvae have a low moisture content of around 30% and a water activity of 0.4. Therefore, dried larvae become storable and have a shelf life of around five to six months if stored in a moisture tight package. The water activity below 0.4 prevents any bacteria or molds from growing. Here you can see again the mass balance, as we already introduced it in the introduction video. Now you see the detailed mass balance for BSF roasting using a small scale setup of a simple wok pan and sand. So for sand roasting, you add sand to the process in a ratio of one to one compared to sanitized larvae. The pan is heated usually by gas. We use LGP gas. Steam will leave the system as water from the larvae is evaporating. So for this setup shown in this video, the drying time takes approximately 20 minutes and the ideal, ideal batch size is 1 kg. The larvae will reach a maximum temperature of around 180 degrees Celsius. For this operation, you need a wide pan. Here we use an aluminum wok pan with a diameter of 30 centimeters. Then you need a stand to place your pan on. And under the pan, you place a stove, which is connected via a gas connecting pipe to a gas gallon. For steering, you need a big spatula. Then for removing the larvae from the pan and the sand, in the end of the operation, you need a mesh spatula. You also need a bulk balance to weigh the larvae and the sand. Finally, you need heating gloves, a lighter and a storage container. Add 1 kg of sand to the wok pan. We recommend to change the sand after 5 cycles of drying, because burnt and dark sand can also make the dried larvae more dark and could also burn the larvae. Then turn on the gas stove and preheat the sand for 15 minutes, when this is your first cycle. Then add 1 kg of sanitized BSF larvae to the sand. Roast the larvae for 15 to 20 minutes while you continuously stir. During the last 5 minutes you will see the larvae puff and you will hear the typical popping sound. You will notice the end of the process when the popping sound is less frequent. Stop the process when the two indicators are true. Indicator 1 is that the larvae need to have a puff shape. And then indicator two is that the larvae need to have a crispy and dry texture. When you crush the larvae with your fingers, it breaks easily apart into fine crumbles. If these indicators are not true and your larvae are still moist or damp, continue stirring and roasting. Remove the larvae from the pan using a mesh spatula. Then weigh the dried larvae and note down the weight in the log sheet. Then let the pop larvae cool down and store them in a closed and big container. 
and the end of the day label the container with the production date. We recommend you to pack your pop larvae into small packages when they completely cool down. To keep track of the activity, fill in a log sheet. First, always fill in the date code of the harvested larvae as well as the larval weight. Always note down the weight of each batch of the larvae going in the pan and of each batch coming out of the pan. Also note down the total drying time. In the end of the activity, sum up the total mass in and out. These two numbers are then needed to calculate the yield, which is a process control parameter. In your Excel sheet, you can then calculate the yield, which is the total mass out divided by the total mass in times 100. The yield should be 25 to 35%. If you get higher yields, this indicates that the larvae are not completely dry yet. If you get lower yields, this may indicate that you lost some material. Now, as usual, we would like to give you some pros and cons of this method. Benefits of this operation are the very low investment costs, then you don't need any electricity connection, which makes this method suitable for also very rural areas. Then also the product quality is good and the end product is marketable as the famous pop larvae. Downsides of these operations are the small batch sizes. The operation is very labor intensive, especially also because you need sand for the operation. This means you have to separate the larvae from the sand in the end, as well as the preheating and the changing of the sand increase the operation time. Now we're already almost at the end of this module on roasting BSF larvae using the simple wok pan. To check up on your knowledge about this operation, we have two questions for you. Question number one. The sand turned already very black. What might be the consequences? The pop larvae will be more dark and might be also burned. Therefore, we recommend to use new sand after five drying cycles. Question number two. You are not sure if your roasting process is already done. What can you check? Check the texture of the pop larvae. Do they fall easily apart when you crush them with your fingers? If yes, your process is done. Now we're already at the end of this module. We saw that sand roasting produces pop larvae in a slightly darker color compared to microwave drying. We also saw that sand is needed for an efficient and fast heat transfer and to minimize burning of the larvae. Sand roasting works with minimal resources, no electricity is needed. Thank you for watching this module, part of the e-learning video series on BSF bio-waste processing. More information can be found in the BSF step-by-step -step guide, which you can download through the QR code here. Both of these materials were part of the FORWARD project by EWAC in collaboration with the Ministry of Public Works in Indonesia and funded by SECO, the Swiss State Secretariat for Economic Affairs.